Well, hello for you. We're going to be doing a little bit of modeling today with exponentials. Our goal, I can solve problems related to exponential growth or decay. So we're looking at modeling with exponential functions. There are many things that follow an exponential growth or decay model. Among them, the value of a vehicle um, as this is actually exponential decay. As soon as you buy a vehicle, it starts to depreciate in value. Uh, and it depreciates the most the first year you have it, and then not quite so much the second year you have it. And then if you think about it down the long run, um, the difference between a 20-year-old car and a 21-year-old car is very negligible as far as anybody's concerned. So the value of the vehicle decreases exponentially. So if we were to graph that, it would look like this. It would drop very quickly in value and then slowly taper off, never really equaling nothing uh, because generally you'll at least have it be worth scrap at some point. Now populations, and whether this is population of people or population of bacteria, um, it grows exponentially. It starts off, if you've got a couple of people in a population, it's going to take a little while before it picks up. But once you've got a number of people in the population, it goes faster and faster and faster. So population is definitely one other application of exponential growth. Um, investments with compound interest is exponential growth. They grow slowly at first, but then they start growing faster and faster as they go along. And radioactivity, we've already done a few examples of half-life. Uh, radioactivity, we, a half-life means that it loses half of its mass over a certain uh, time period. So say I had 20 grams of a substance and its half-life was, um, oh, let's just say 20 years. So if it has a half-life of 20 years, after 20 years, there will be 10 grams because half of it is gone. After 40 years, we half this again. We don't, the other half doesn't go away, half of this. So there will be 5 grams left. And then at 60 years, so another half-life away, there will be half of this, so 2.5 grams left. Okay, so it's not just half of it goes in 20 years and the next half goes in the next 20 years. No, no, no. It's a half, then a half, then half that, then half that. And if you keep halving something, you never ever get to zero. You get closer and closer and closer, but never quite all the way. So that's just a quick uh, talk about some of the exponential growth and decay you might see. So the basic growth, the, not grown, the basic growth or decay formula is A equals A naught bracket 1 plus or minus, depending on whether we're growing or decaying, 1 plus or minus the rate of growth. Now the rate of growth has to be given to us as a decimal. As a decimal. Okay. Um, so if they give you something like a 20% growth rate, in order to use it in here, you'd have to change it to 0.2 something along those lines. And n is the number of growth or decay periods that we're talking about. So how long does it take it to grow? Or how long does it take it to decay? How many um, half-lifes are there in that particular amount? Okay. So that's, I've just sort of explained all of that and it's all written in writing there. We're just gonna glaze by that. And we're gonna take a look at an example one. It says blue jeans fade when washed due to the loss of blue dye from the fabric. If each washing removes about 2.2% of the original dye from the fabric, how many washings are required to give a pair of jeans a well-worn look? And we define well-worn by only 30% of the dye is left. So here we're gonna take a look at this and rather than using A, we're gonna say, we're gonna use D. We're gonna say D is the amount of dye left and D naught is the amount we had to begin with. And we're going to do one minus R to the N. Now, we know that we have to choose minus because we are losing blue dye. This is decaying. We are losing um, blueness. So we have to subtract the R and N of course is the number of um, well, it's, it's actually what we're being asked for. It's the, the number of washings required uh, or the number of times we lose this 2.2%. So 
d equals d naught. We don't actually know how much was in there to begin with, but we want 30% left. So um, we do know what the ratio of those two things are. So I'm just going to fill in the rest. 1 minus uh, 0 0.022. That comes from here. Uh, and we're trying to find n. Now I've got a lot of stuff left in this equation, uh, but that's okay because as I said, I don't know how much was there, but I know how much of the ratio I want left. So I'm going to divide both of these sides by d naught, and d divided by d naught is actually what that 30% is. If I take the amount I have now and divide it by the original, I'm going to get 30%. And of course 1 minus 0 0.022 is 0 0.978 to the exponent n. And what we're going to have over here is 30%, 0 0.3 equals 0 0.978 to the n. Now we just have to figure out what n is. And since we know how to use logarithms, I can now actually just take the log of both sides and I'll be able to get that n out of the exponent. So we've got the log of 0 0.3 will equal n times the log of 0 0.978. And now we'll divide both sides by the log of 0 0.978, so I get the log of 0 0.3 divided by the log of 0 0.978. And if you punch that into your calculator, it will tell you that you need 54 washes, approximately. Now I'm just going to add in a little bit here. I'm going to move this down a little bit and say taking the log of both sides, taking the log of both sides, dot dot dot, and what else do I need to put here? Um, down here I used power law to get this n out in front, so I should say that I used power law just to help us out. And since this is a word problem, I should say, therefore, it will take 54 washes. Okay, next question. How long does it take for $2,500 to grow to 4000 if it is invested at an interest rate of 6.5% per year and compounded semi-annually twice a year. Now again, you may have done some of these questions before. We're going to look at this one again. And here's our just our general formula. A equals A naught uh, 1 plus, this is growing, so we have to use plus this time, time 1 plus R to the N. Now here's a problem uh, when I do this. Um, I'm given an interest rate of 6.5% and 6.5% is actually for the whole year. Since this is compounded twice a year, I have to split this interest rate in half. So I'm going to take this, move it down. Whoop, I don't need to. Let's get rid of that thing. And I'm going to say R equals 0 0.065 divided by 2. Uh, and we are trying to find n, and n will be the number of compound periods when we're done. So here's what I'm going to do. We are going to, I'm going to move that back up again. Um, a, the amount we want is $4,000. A naught is the initial amount, so that's the amount we invested in the first place, so 2500 now 1 plus the rate is this thing here, 0 0.065 divided by 2, and n is what we're trying to find. Now we want to get this n completely by itself. So we're going to start moving that around here. And I want to leave this on my calculator so that I get all of the digits um, from here. So we want to make sure that, that we leave that there. Now this one it's not so bad because 0 0.065 is actually divided by 2 is actually not a big deal. So 0 0.065 divided by 2 plus 
1 is what's in that thing, 1.0325. So let's get that in there right now. 1.0325 to the exponent n. And then this is 4,000. Now I want to take 4,000 and divide it by um, 2,500 because I need just one number equal to an expression so I can take the log of both sides. So we do 400 or 4,000. Uh, divided by 2500 and that's going to give me 1.6 and that's going to equal 1.0325 to the n. Now we're going to take the log of both sides. So taking the log of both sides, taking the log of both sides. Dun dun dun. We get the log of 1.6 equals n times the log of 1.0325, and we know that because of the power law of logarithms. And now we're going to divide both sides by the log of 1.0325, so we get the log of 1.6 divided by the log of 1.0325, and that is going to equal our n. Just moving that down just a tiny little bit and if that evaluates to 15 approximately. So now this is 15 compounding periods so it's not 15 years because this was compounded semi-annually which means twice a year. So this n I have to divide by 2 to get the number of years because it's 15 half years. So seven and a half years and we can write that as a as an exclamation mark or as an exclamation mark as a concluded as a therefore statement um, but I'm not going to take the time to do that right now uh, and the last question assume that the inflation rate stays constant at 3.1 percent per year if you pay 4.99 for a bag of milk right now what would you theoretically and again, theoretically, this is all with math, and real life doesn't follow math to a T. It's only predictive. Uh, what would we expect to pay for a bag of milk in five years? And the second part of this, how long would it take us to, for a bag of milk to cost $10? So let's see in five years. This is uh, inflation. It's 3.1% per year, and inflation is increasing. That means our prices go up. So we want the price will equal the price now, price original, uh, 1 plus 0 0.031. There's our rate uh, and to the n. Now this is a formula for at any time. Now we just happen to know we want an n for five years. So we go p naught, and I can fill in p naught, it's 499. So right now, a bag of milk costs us 49 cents. We want to apply this, um, this growth factor on it and see what it comes to. Now if you type that in, it's best to put this part in first. Works on all the calculators. 1.031 to the exponent 5, and I'm going to hit equals, and that is my, that how is how many times bigger it's going to be. So I'm going to multiply that by 4.99. So $5.81 is what we can expect it to be in four years time. Or five years time, sorry. And now what we want to do is take this equation, what we have here, um, price equals 4.99 because that's how much it costs us now times 1.031 but we don't know how long it says how long so since we don't know how long we're gonna leave that as an n and that's what we're gonna find out because we know the price that we're aiming for we're aiming for 10 bucks so I'm gonna put 10 in there equals 4.99 1.031 to the n Now we're going to divide both sides by 499, which gets us on this side 
basically 2. 10 divided by, this is pretty much 5. So 10 divided by 4.99 is as close to 2 as we need it to be. And we go 1.031 to the exponent n. Taking the log of both sides. And there we had it. I did a little bit more than just taking the log of both sides there. We've got it all for you there. Um, we've done this over and over again, so I didn't feel the need to walk you through it. Um, and so that means in 23 years. So therefore, in 23 years, we may be paying $10 for a bag of milk. And that concludes this lesson.